Hello, my name is Shane Coughlin, and I'm the general manager of the Open Chain project at the Linux Foundation. First of all, it's wonderful to be here today at the Alibaba Standardization Summit. This type of event is critical for sharing knowledge around things like open innovation, open source, and formal standardization. I would like to thank our host, Alibaba, as well, for their commitment to making a global supply chain that works more efficiently, and particularly their commitment to getting discussions around things like open source and standards into a positive, advanced and efficient state. Now let's hop into my presentation. I'm here today to talk about Open Chain and Linux Foundation standards. So we're going to talk about making open source more predictable and sustainable. Getting started, let's set context for my main example, the Open Chain project. The first thing to say is that this has nothing to do with blockchain. This is all about supply chains. The Open Chain project is about building trust in the supply chain. It started in 2016, and the first challenge it addressed was how to increase trust around open source from the optic of license compliance. In 2016, open source license compliance was one of the largest challenges we had in the global supply chain. To address this, the Open Chain project built a simple, effective process management specification. This is a short document, only about seven pages, that explains a quality compliance program, and it makes sure that it's something every company in the world can adopt. I'll talk more about this in a moment. Now, continuing its mission to build trust in the supply chain, OpenChain worked on another specification or standard. Our recent work has included a security compliance specification. This has come to market quite recently in 2022. And similar to our license compliance specification, the security compliance specification is simple clear and designed for companies around the world to be able to adopt it easily. The important point is that the Open Chain project is focused on one mission, building trust in the supply chain. We're looking at open source, we're looking at types of compliance, and we're looking at what type of standards we can build around that. The companies behind the Open Chain project are varied. As you can see from this slide, we have companies from Silicon, such as Arm and Qualcomm, all the way through to areas like Endpoint Cloud, like Microsoft and Google, Automotive, like BMW and Toyota, and Telecommunications, like Huawei and Ericsson. These are companies in different markets with different product priorities, but one thing is in common. All of them use open source, all of them have supply chains, and all of them want the global supply chain to work more effectively. Now, the companies on the governing board of Open Chain are just one part of this global project. The Open Chain project runs in the same way as an open source software project. Companies from all over the world collaborate to create the standards, to share the standards, and to build reference material around the standards. The Open Chain project has thousands of people involved in the various work groups, special interest groups, and user groups around the world. For example, we have work groups focused on licensing and security, building the licensing and security standards. We have an education work group building the reference material. We have an automation work group talking about how you can do this stuff at scale. How do you manage processes at scale? We have a public policy work group helping governments understand this domain. And we have an export control work group talking about that type of compliance. We also have industry special interest groups. Our three current examples are automotive, telecommunications, and our official partners. These are special interest groups where people talk about their domain challenges 
and things that might be interesting for them and which might in the future be interesting for other market spaces as well. We have local user groups across many locations. Right now, we have user groups in China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, India, Germany, the UK, and the US. These are areas for companies, just like yourself, user companies, to get together, share notes, develop material, make translations, and basically share that knowledge you have built over the years with each other to increase efficiency. All of this activity, these work groups, special interest groups, and user groups are looking at the same thing. Trusted supply chain, security domains, and the type of material we need, their standards, reference material, other supporting material. Now I'll start to explain our standards, starting with license compliance. Our license compliance standard was introduced in 2016 and it was a de facto industry standard for about four years. In 2020, it became a formal ISO international standard. This is a short, clear, and simple process management standard. It works company by company. Each company using the standard is asked to have inbound, internal, and outbound processes. Simplifying it, Companies are asked to have an inbound process to identify what is this software and what license applies to it. They're asked to have internal training, policy, and processes for managing open source software and open source software licenses. And they're asked to have an outbound process to check what's going outbound and what license applies to it. The entire document is about seven pages long, and it is very simple to read understand and implement. Our security assurance specification, our second standard, is very similar. In fact, it's almost identical. That's no mistake. People started using our license compliance standard for security. So initially, we wrote a guide saying, if you are using the ISO standard for license compliance in the domain of security, here are the most important points. But then, like any open source community, we felt we needed to address the market gap better. We forked the license compliance standard. So we took the license compliance standard, removed the license compliance specific parts, replaced them with security specific parts, and ended up with a simple, clear sister standard. They're very similar standards. And if you use one, it's easy to adopt the other. Though, of course, one has a focus on license compliance and the other a focus on security. At the moment, the security standard is a de facto industry standard. We expect it to become an ISO standard in 2023. Of course, you can begin adopting it right now as a de facto standard, and that means you will automatically support the ISO standard when it is granted. The important point is there are two standards. They are sister standards. License compliance is already an ISO standard. Security will become an ISO standard shortly. Now, building standards is only one part of the story. Having a document that is a specification is useful, but it isn't the complete picture. You need to have reference material to help people use it. And we provide a lot of that. Our community around the world of user companies using open source and using our standards develops a lot of material. Online training courses, training slides, playbooks, case studies. The material available is designed to make it easy for the supply chain to think, ah, I want to use this standard, but where do I start? Oh, I see I need to have a process here, but what type of content should the process have? The reference material is designed to answer those questions. And of course, because it's developed by user companies just like you, it's directly relevant to the market situation you all share. Now for the Open Chain project, as a project developing standards, we are very busy making sure that these standards are going into the supply chain. In 2023, we expect 
the scaling of our ISO standard for license compliance to continue. We're currently reaching thousands of companies and we want to scale to tens of thousands. We expect that to work primarily through the sales and procurement process with many procurement departments now asking for open chain ISO 5230 conformance. We expect to convert our security standard from a de facto standard into an ISO standard. This will make it a sister ISO standard of license compliance. ISO standards, of course, are very useful for things like procurement because they're very easy to include in things like procurement contracts. We also expect to explore other topics like public policy with our work groups allowing people to come along, share notes, get informed, and make sure that the policy being developed reflects the market realities. Finally, of course, we will be developing more reference material, translations, and various other types of community support like meetups to ensure that people interested in using standards for having a trusted supply chain, interested in having quality open source license compliance or security compliance programs can get the help they need. But how did we do this? How did we build a standard and turn it into an ISO standard? I want to briefly explain the methodology used. The first method is a very simple answer. We set up an open source style project, companies got together and we wrote the standard. This gave us a de facto industry standard and as our community adopted it, it got momentum. But that doesn't answer the question of how did it become an ISO standard? The answer is that in the Linux Foundation, the organization where Open Chain Project is located, there is another project called the Joint Development Foundation. And the Joint Development Foundation is designed to help people making standards turn them into structured and then formal standards. In other words, Joint Development Foundation can help you with drafting a specification and it can help you with taking an industry standard and making it a formal ISO standard. The Joint Development Foundation is, like I said, part of the Linux Foundation, and anyone can go to it and get help with drafting standards or turning them into ISO standards. Apart from OpenChain, plenty of other projects are doing this right now. You can see on this screen examples like GraphQL or the Trust Over IP Foundation. All of these projects displayed here are building specifications and getting help from Joint Development Foundation in that building process, and some of them are working on becoming ISO standards as well. The Linux Foundation provides resources to get started, and one good example is the community specification. This is located on GitHub, so pretty much like everything else, it's very, very open source. The community specification helps a project or a company get started with writing a specification that will be easy to maintain and easy to convert into things like an ISO standard. You can go look for the community specification, get the material, and just use it. There's no gateway or limitation on this. The purpose of making material like this available and the purpose of having things like the Joint Development Foundation is to ensure that the long term support of open source, the sustainability of open source through things like standardization is easier than ever. Now to summarize, I've explained to you that there's a project called the Open Chain Project, and that project is designed to build trust in the supply chain. It does it from the perspective of types of compliance, and the way it executes is through creating standards and reference material for those standards. The Open Chain project maintains ISO, IEC 5230, the International Standard for Open Source License Compliance. It also maintains a newer specification for security called the Open Chain Security Assurance Specification. That is not yet an ISO standard, but it is expected to become an ISO standard in 2023. This work by the Open Chain project is actually part of a larger picture. As open source gets more mature, standardization gets more important. The Linux Foundation supports this through initiatives like the Joint Development Foundation. 
That helps projects build their standards, and it can help projects turn their standards into ISO standards. An example of really useful and practical material to make this happen is the community specification. That explains exactly what type of structure you need and how to draft a specification. The idea is to give a good start to projects so that when it comes to things like formal standardization, their path is as smooth as possible. The purpose of all of this is simple, making open source management through standards easier than before. And that's important for predictable, reliable supply chains and the long-term sustainability of open source in global products and solutions. Thank you for listening to my talk. And as always, I'm available, the Open Chain Project is available, and the Linux Foundation is available to support you in what you want to do around open source and standardization. Please reach out and be part of our activities, uh, especially around Open Chain Project. I'm selfish, that's my project, so I'm very fond of it. Especially around Open Chain Project, if you're doing any type of software, any type of product and service, our standards can help ensure you are aligned with the global supply chain. That's important for your efficiency, and it's important for the efficiency of everyone else. Turn up, there's no cost, no barrier, just be part of what we do on the calls, using the standards, taking the reference material, and sharing your experience. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy the rest of this conference. Thank you to Alibaba for hosting it. And thank you, the audience, for being at this Alibaba Standardization Summit and making sure that all of us are doing better around open source.